your fault. Your presence creates these animals. <laughs> I'm here with Dax, one of the men behind the Dark Knight, and we've checked out the demo. The Catwoman levels look fantastic. And I see from the picture behind you that Batman's got a bloody fist. How does this game connect to Arkham Asylum? It connects in loads of different ways. From a narrative perspective, from a gameplay pers perspective, it's really important to us that there's uh, a really genuine sense of connectivity and continuity between um, the end of Arkham Asylum and the start of Arkham City. So what gamers are going to find when they do go into Arkham City is a massively expanded game world and a much more brutal and hostile uh, environment that Batman really has to battle for survival in. Now there was a really neat sort of background story of the Riddler in Arkham, in Arkham yeah. Asylum. Does that expand in Arkham City? I'm so glad that you asked that because the answer is emphatically yes. Oh, We've okay. put so much work into the Riddler and personally he's my favourite part of the really? entire game. He's amazing. So the humiliation that he suffered at the hands of Batman at the end of Arkham Asylum has really wound him up. And the 18 months between the end of the first game and the start of this, he's been hard at work and he's really setting out to exact his revenge against Batman. So gamers are going to find an incredible amount of new challenges from, from Riddler and he's really upping his game. It's no longer just verbal abuse and, and uh, you know, light-hearted puzzles. It's serious physical threats, challenges to both Batman, Batman's life and the lives of innocent civilians. Okay, when you say upping his game, in Arkham Asylum and that meant jo Poison Ivy turned into a giant, like Resident <laughs> Evil style plant. Joker turned into this big hulking monster. Yeah. So how, on a scale of one to 10, how ramped up is Riddler? Because he's a pretty weenie guy. That's right. I mean, if, if you know, I think Riddler knows that if he came across uh, Batman in a dark alley, it would just be a one hit situation, right? So he's got to take on Batman on the intellectual battlefield. And that's where uh, the, the appeal of Riddler really hits home for us because Batman's got this amazing force, this amazing impact in combat. But when you come up against a villain like Riddler, you've got to totally rethink the way that you approach that challenge. And gamers, I think, are really going to love that sweet change of pace when they come up against uh, all of the different supervillains right across Arkham City. So is the Riddler going to be like the scarecrow of this game? Because that level in the first game was a fantastic change. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of amazing stuff that gamers are going to find in the game and a lot of stuff that we're not even going to talk about, even right up to launch. So, um, oh, really? yeah, I think gamers are going to finally get their hands on this game and find a whole lot of stuff that really comes out of nowhere and blows their mind. How many characters are featured in the game? A lot. So we've made a load of character announcements already. Obviously Joker, Harley Quinn, Two-Face, Catwoman, uh, Zaz, Calendar Man, Hugo Strange running the show, oh, okay. Penguin, uh, of course Riddler, and we've still got more to come. So what is the mystery, the secret? Because Batman's a detective, and that was very strong in the first game, the stealth combat, yeah. the working your way around the yeah. situations. What's the big mystery he's up against in this game? The, the entire game world of Arkham City really wanted to draw on the, the atmosphere and the intensity that we established in Arkham Asylum. But in addition to that, we wanted to really crank up the threat. And so when you go into Arkham City as Batman, you know that everyone in there wants you dead. All of those amazing supervillains are not happy that you're in there to, uh, d to d deliver justice on the streets of Gotham. Right off over the top of that, Hugo Strange is the warden of Arkham City. He runs the whole show. He makes all of the rules that everyone needs to abide by. And in addition to that, it's personal with him because he knows Batman's true identity. So when B Batman goes into Arkham City, the stakes just could not be higher. So what we wanted to really create was a sense of incredible hostility, a place where you do not want to be, but when you get to the end of the game and you've dominated everything that's in your way, that's when you genuinely feel like the Dark Knight. Now, touching on that, genuinely feeling like the Dark Knight, the first game focused heavily on doing a lot with very few buttons, and you had some really awesome combos showing off, the double teams, the 20 combo sequences. Yep. Yep. Is that, are players still gonna feel that pick up and play connection to the, the character? Absolutely, you know, the lessons that we learned developing Arkham Asylum uh, are not the sort of things that we're just gonna discard easily. You know, this is um, a really core fundamental attitude that we have at Rocksteady, that we, we take those things that we did well, and I think we did a lot of things very well in the first game, and we're building them out and really taking them to the next level. So combat is a beautiful spectator sport for me as well. I love playing it, but I also love watching other people play it. There's some amazing animations right throughout entire combat sequences. And I, you know, that's what I love about the prospect of, of playing Arkham City, that anyone who's with me is going to enjoy it just as much as I will.